Okay, so what is the Antioch network? Now, about a week ago or so, we uh, were, I, th I think it's two, week ago, two weeks ago now, the time flies, we were trying to make a small, not very invasive upgrade to the Babylon network, which had been humming along for about, well, I wanna say three months or so, mainly to tweak a little bit of the tokenomics parameters. We wanted to increase the number of simultaneous proposals there could be, just a few minor things like that to improve the effectiveness of the testnet. And um, it wasn't expected to be a big deal, but um, what happened was uh, not that long after the upgrade happened. So just for context for the people that may not know, um, the blockchain uh, system or variety that the Joystream um, platform is built on allows you to upgrade the rules of the chain itself in flight using a special kind of transaction. And that's great for lots of reasons that we'll probably cover in the future. Um, and we tried to use this uh, on-chain upgradability feature at, at this time, at that time. And, uh, and that was supposed to be fine, but what happened was in a matter of a few, uh, I wanna say 20 blocks or so after the upgrade, there was a split in the network, uh, which ended up uh, partitioning the validators into two separate pools. One group thought that the new runtime was in play and one group thought that the old run runtime was in play. That is obviously very undesirable. The whole, whole point of your consensus system is to have agreement upon what the, the history and therefore the state of your blockchain is. So that, that's obviously a serious problem. And, um, and you know, we've gone through a lot of effort trying to get to the bottom of what happened, trying to figure out the, the root cause of live failures in distributed systems is notoriously difficult. In particular, if you haven't actually prepared yourself for trying to debug those sorts of failures to begin with, which we hadn't. And so we've gone through lots of different iterations of, or I should say, you know, uh, possible hypotheses for what the cause could be. And uh, the, the best hypothesis that we have at the, be at the current time is that there is a specific bug in the version of substrate. So taking a step back here as well, in case you don't know, the Joystream blockchain is built on the substrate blockchain framework, which is the framework that the Polkadot blockchain is built on, and in general, the framework that's used to build parachains, which are blockchains that connect to Polkadot, which Joystream itself may or may not end up doing. Uh, it's a great framework because it means you don't have to focus on peer-to-peer -peer networking or consensus or any of these very low-level things, similarly as if you were deploying on Ethereum, let's say. And, and it really allows you to, to focus on building exactly the business logic that's specific to your blockchain. So just mentioning, you know, where, where does this Substrate uh, thing come from? So we're using Substrate, we're using a specific version of Substrate. It isn't particularly new. And um, the best hypothesis we, we could really come up with, for which there is limited evidence, I should say, was that there was a specific kind of bug in the version of Substrate that we are relying on. and that's you know that's the best candidate for what was causing the failure so what we've been working on for the past two weeks or so has been to obviously figure that out and then to migrate to a newer version of substrate so that that's what we've done we used to be on version uh two release candidate four now we're on 201 and we're going to be launching launching a new chain namely the anti network uh, that's probably going to be in a two or three days from now. So that, that's actually wrong on the slides because I just made them a few, well, a while back. So, um, and that will be based on a new version of Substrate, which has benefits of its own, uh, I should say, but uh, but we're mainly doing it to, to hopefully resolve this problem. And it would, of course, we would then get the runtime that we were trying to get initially, you know, with these improvements, to the parameters for the proposal system and so on. There's also been some other changes to the way the the council work, we I think we expanded from, actually, I don't remember now, to be honest, there's so many things going on, but it's a it's a bigger council, the council period is, is, is now shorter. So there are a few things that have happened that have independent benefits, but the main issue here in Antioch is really to get back to the core 
you know, use case that Babylon already had with these small improvements. And then we're trying to get to Sumer as, as soon as possible. So, so that's the story on Antioch. It's, it's a big, you know, inconvenient um, departure from, from the focus that we had, but we had to do it. And, and now Sumer is, is hopefully next uh, within a sh short while. So that's it on Antioch. Join me again for Sumer.